It's locked. <coughs> oh, don't worry. It isn't COVID. I got a strange case of the Nancy Drew flu. It's highly contagious. Are you ready to catch a case? <laughs> Nancy Drew, Travis J. Space. <laughs> Howdy folks, welcome to Travi J Space here on YouTube and welcome to a brand new series, a brand new Nancy Drew mystery ahead of us here today. <laughs> I usually say welcome back to another episode of, which I almost said and I didn't, I'm very proud of myself, I usually cut myself off, but I didn't, I still got it. <laughs> I have to remind myself this is a brand new experience, which I am so excited about. We have been, you guys have been waiting a very long, patient time for us to start this mystery. Ever since we finished, um, uh, the ranch, the ranch, the ranch. Secret of Shadow Ranch, the Secret of Shadow Ranch, that's right. That's right, so we left Arizona, we went back home to River Heights. And now we are heading across the pond to England for this mystery. The Curse of Blackmore Manor. Ooh, spooky! <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to jump right into this. I'm just, I'm very eager. I am very excited because this one's a very scary Nancy Drew. Um, I know the very first one, the very first one we did together... Uh, was Message of Haunted Mansion. Now, looking back on that in hindsight, I kind of wish I would have saved that one for later on, only because that one means probably the most to me. It was the first one I ever played, first Nancy Drew I ever played as a kid uh, in the first grade. And it was it was really scary too, but the thing is, is I was just starting off my Let's Play series and getting back into the groove of things, you know, get, uh, get my groove back, how Stella got her groove back. <laughs> So, I don't know why I chose the best one, my personal favorite, as the very first. I think I just got very excited to jump in. And also, actually, I did a bit of research on the channel. I have a, I don't know if you guys heard of the YouTube Studio app. Ooh, fancy. Uh, it's, it's a spinoff app for YouTube creators. And it basically shows you all of uh, your channel's ins and outs, facts, numbers, you know. Uh, percentages, who's watching what, views, you know, all the analytics are all built in there, down to like a fine line. You can really filter that stuff, let me tell you. Uh, and, and actually, side note, what I also learned from all that is, hi Germany, a huge third of my viewers come from Germany. <laughs> I love you guys. I'm German too, if you didn't, if you didn't already know. So that's pretty cool. Um, and guess what? The majority of my viewers comes from America. It was like 20, 20 to 30 percent more viewers in America than Canada. Oh, Canada, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of you. Very ashamed. <laughs> and we have a, actually have a, uh, a pretty significant uh, percentage of viewers in Ireland. Hi there. there. <laughs> Can't really do my Irish accent at the moment. <laughs> Can't tell her it's Scottish or not. <laughs> oh, I'm not good at Irish and Scottish. I always get those two mixed up. But British, on the other hand. I am quite fluent and I'm, I know how to speak British. I'm also British as well. So, German, British, Irish, um, Scottish. Uh, what else am I? Canadian, of course, through and through. Um, what else am I? I don't know. Could be a bunch of things. Just get on that ancestry. Uh, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Anyways, I'm stalling. Oh, that's what I was, I was going to say something about analytics, views, YouTube studio. Hmm. I forgot. I hate when that happens because I know it was something. I got sidetracked by the viewers in different countries and there was something specific I was going to share with you. 
What, what, what is it? Oh, that's gonna bother me. The train's like leaving the station at the moment and I can't, uh, there's something important. Oh, wow. Oh, Nancy Drew. Right, okay. <laughs> Train's backing up. Choo-choo. <laughs> uh, slowly. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, so let's go through it. Because, <laughs> um, so yeah, leading into what I'm about to say. 12 years of Travis J. Space. Whoa! Coming up on July 11th. I'm so excited. I initially started this channel in July on July 11th of 2010. Uh, and the initial idea and creation of this channel was had nothing to do with Let's Plays, you know, branding and all this. I never knew what I was getting myself into. If I would have known, if I knew then what I knew now, I'd be pretty shooketh back then. Little, uh, little 13 year old me would have been just completely overwhelmed and maybe a little discouraged hearing about all of this stuff that YouTube requires, you know, you gotta lots lots you gotta do so i had found out uh so 12 years of driver's space whoop. uh going backwards though through the content because i've been trying to create some kind of promotional pieces to celebrate and get everyone all excited and to actually encourage everyone to take a look back at all my old stuff you know, some of it's a little embarrassing <laughs> it's my teen years so not everything is uh clean cut uh <laughs> or censored for that matter so <laughs> Uh, yeah, brace yourself. Uh, it looks like though in 2014, I had an announcement uh, video for Message in a Haunted Mansion. So I was initially going to do the Nancy Drew Let's Play series uh, eight years ago, and I just didn't do it. So I had an announcement, and I just didn't do it <laughs> for eight years. <laughs> so I don't know. I wish I would have. So initially, I was supposed to start it then. So I guess it makes sense I started it first when I started this Let's Play journey um, with you guys back in uh, late 2021, a few months ago. Um, so I don't know. I think what I'm thinking to close this kind of topic here, uh, what I've kind of decided is that later on, when we're finished the Nancy series, I'll go back and play again. Message it on animation. In fact, maybe we'll do the senior version just to spice it up. Who knows? All time favorite game. So without further ado, and I did, I did start the timer. Oh god, I didn't start it. All right, that's fine. I'll just start when the game starts. <laughs> if I ever stop, blah 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 blah. <laughs> Jitter chatter. Let's get at her. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Can't get at her because I'm chitter chatter. Ring. <laughs> All right. Enough of that shenanigans. We've got a mystery to solve. Okay. So let's just jump right into this, shall we? All right, here we go, guys. Nancy Drew, Curse of Blackmore Manor, England, Scary Mansion, Haunted Mansion, on Tribe J Space. <laughs> okay, let's just, yeah, let's do it. Welcome to my latest case, The Curse of Blackmore Manor. To start, choose junior or senior detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose gameplay overview. Well, we know how it's gonna go, so. We're just gonna say yes to Junior. Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmoor Manor, where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, Ever since Linda moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's practically bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Mm. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. So here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. <sighs> Talk to you soon. I hope. Nancy. Yeah. No, I miss. Good luck. Okay. This is, this is from the announcement trailer, remember? remember? Scary though. This is uh... Ooh. Very spooky. Very spooky. What a man. Mansion. Way too big to call it a man. This is a mansion. Door. See? 
Who's there? Hello. Hello? Yeah, you did. Hello. Oh, I thought I had to click it. Ah! 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 Someone called pest control. There's something out there. <laughs> Where, child? Who cares? Let me in. Over there. I mean, something was out there. Oh, come in. <laughs> She's sick of our games already. Don't even know her name yet. She's sick of our games. I'm Mrs. Drake. I take it you are Nancy Drew? Yes, and I really yes. did see something, Mrs. Drake. I heard something, too. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. I'd like to see Linda, if I could. I'm afraid Linda is uh, not quite ready to meet with you just now. But please, come see me after you've unpacked. I'll be in the conservatory. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I love her. She's fun. I love her accent. Meet me. I'll be in the conservatory dealing with my plants. Go and check into your room and meet me down there for a little chit chat. <laughs> uh, I love this room too. Oh, it's good to be back in Blackmore Manor. Kind of. Kind of sorta. I'm a little spooked. I'm a little scared actually already. Cause that entry, those eyes, weren't, weren't those freaky? Ugh. And the noise. Nancy. <laughs> I don't like that. How does the werewolf or whatever that thing was know our name? The clock's going. Do we have the time? Oh, we've got a cell phone in this one, guys. Uh, what was the last one we played? Secret of Shadow Ranch, right? So, oh, we had a cell phone the last one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, okay. So it's not that new to you guys. Um, actually, uh, coincidentally, I don't believe in coincidences, but sometimes I create coincidences. <laughs> um, coincidentally, <laughs> subconsciously, uh, this game actually came out relatively close to Sh uh, Secret of Shadow Ranch. If I'm correct, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. It, it actually is simultaneous. I think it was Secret of Shadow Ranch and then they released Curse of Blackmore. 2004. Four? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> quote, don't quote me on that. But definitely correct me if you know the truth. <laughs> the answer. The truth. Oh, I love these little things. I think these are supposed to focus you or you know bring your mind focus and, and concentration and stuff hmm. i feel like i had one of these in real life i think it would really help of course i've got i've got fidget spinners literally everywhere <laughs> i got this like a fidget device like I, and here i am talking about getting one of those i've already got so many devices here to help cool my you know squirrel behavior <laughs> all right let's stop that all right i'm getting distracted we gotta go see mrs drake and say hello and make our introductions um okay the timer is on i thought my elbow is right in the way of that if i pause the timer we're gonna be here all day oh a chart of some sort okay oh okay astrology yeah i love me some astrology okay so these puzzles might not be so hard because i'm i'm pretty good with oh oh solstitium solstitium solstice spring autumnals autumn okay so it's like a seasonal thing here so they, i guess it's astrology but it's not quite well now i'm seeing some familiar names aquarius taurus ursa major leo okay Eventually, we'll have to uh, probably, likely, familiarize ourselves with that chart for something. Anyway, and of course, Nancy's signature a briefcase or luggage hair. She's got all the same clothes from Treasure in the Royal Tower. <laughs> oh yes, Queen. She's still got her clothes from from the from the nineties going on. I love it. I, I don't know if they ever updated her clothes in any of the future games, huh? Now I'm wondering. Good question, actually. Curious. Maybe you guys know. 
viewers. Did they ever update the clothes? I never really paid attention in later games, but I'm kind of hoping deep inside that they don't. They didn't. Because Nancy's a true 90s gal, right? I mean, to older generations, she's not. But <laughs> to me, she is a true 90s girl. She's the it girl. She's a forever the it girl. Oh, look at this painting. Is there something I can click, maybe? No. All right, worth a shot. Interesting lamp, too. I like that. It's coming to the podium. Is there only one of those in this room? Oh, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not here to decorate, but I definitely put another one of those on this side. Move that chair for it a little bit. Okay, we got our alarm clock. Fabulous. Looking a little, uh... How the heck do I get out of here? Oh, okay. It's on. And, oh, we got a little phone. A cook. Oh! We're gonna cook some food. Well, we're not gonna cook food. Looks like we're gonna order some food at uh, some point. What's in here? Can I can I go in here? No, I can't. Oh, I don't like that noise. Moo. Moo. <laughs> the hell's that? Moo. <laughs> this cringy. Moo. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we're already, I'm already getting scared. Hmm, a tripod. Oh. For a camera, maybe? I don't know, though. Because look how high that window is. We ain't getting any views from there. Let's extend it. That's a pretty high up window. Because this is Nancy's height. No, no, that is not a camera tripod. Ain't nobody taking pictures out that window. Uh, maybe a telescope, though. Going this way. How is that going to hold on to a camera? Yeah, I don't... <laughs> an alarm clock. Yeah, I'm just gonna stay away from the alarm clock. It's making me laugh, and... I really like this coat of arms. It's very mysterious. Some puzzles built in here. This whole thing just looks like a giant puzzle going on, you know? The words. I'm sure these little symbols got something to do with it, too. What's this little box? Oh. Oh. Oh, ho, ho. Okay. Oh, oh! This puzzle's got layers, layers upon layers. Okay, all right. Oh, and there's each side too. Let's spin the box. That sounds like a heavy ass box. Ooh, Need two hands for that one. <laughs> okay, I think we have checked everything in here. Let's check our to-do list. There can't be much in here. When the task has been completed, remember to check it up. That's done. Yeah. You should know. It's just a given. Figure out where the conservatory is. Okay, but we'll talk to her. Talk to Linda ASAP. Yes. Figure out over the little box. Okay, so now she's taking notes on the stuff we have found in the room. Great. We'll save those notes for later. And now we go on. We go on adventure. What's all this shit going on here? We got, all of a sudden got a lot of. Uh, oh, oh! We got some emails. Dear valued customer, just a reminder that your current phone plan does not allow you for the sending or receiving of emails outside the continental United States. Hopefully your decision not to upgrade to a more flexible, albeit somewhat more expensive plan has not caused you too much inconvenience. Sincerely, customer service, Fleekem Phone Co. Well, well, we don't have time to email, so <laughs> bye. <laughs> Well, you're off to England. <laughs> We're saying this one. Oh, George and Bess. Ah, oh, there's two voices. Dang. Well, you're off to England and we're off to sailing camp. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Hopefully this will be the year Bess and I win the regatta instead of those snobby Maxwell twins. Oh yeah, Maxwell twins. That does sound like a snobby set of rich boys or something. <laughs> Bess thinks they should be disqualified for being too tan. And setting a bad example for the younger campers when it comes to skincare. Ha! But I don't think the camp director is going to buy it. Anyway, no digital devices allowed. So cheerio, pip pip. And we'll talk to you as soon as we get back. I like that, no digital services or devices allowed. That should be an everyday thing around in this world today. 2004, you can get away with that stuff. 2022, digital was everywhere. There's probably a camera on me other than this one <laughs> right now. <laughs> Congra congrats on your Great Britain gig. We'll be, who's this, Frank and Joan? Oh, we'll be thinking of you while we help our neighbor, Mr. Bergdorf, 
and install his brand new satellite dish and big screen television. Oh, look at that. I'm going from mysteries to helping out the community. Good boys. Good men. Good men. We love you. Hopefully our unselfish act of kindness will help him forget all those petunias we trampled while chasing fly balls into his yard. Okay, so more redemption rather than uh, <laughs> just helping a hand or giving a helping hand for no good reason. And we'll compel him to invite us over once in a while. Like whenever a major sports event is on. <laughs> good luck cracking the case, Frank and Joe. All right, now that we got our emails, why does it still say there's something to look at? Is this the website thing? Yeah, why stars seem to move. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay, we're getting into that astrological, you know. What, what the heck is this? I clicked the other one, didn't I? Didn't I click this one? Aha, built in the 12th century. Whoa, ho, ho. This castle was built in the 1100s. That's wild. By a warrior named Randolph the Red. Blackmore Manor is one of the oldest residences in England. Yikes. Thanks. I was I, I was already scared. Now I'm real scared. Randolph and his descendants came to be known by the ancient name of the area surrounding Blackmore. Penvillain. Love that name. Penvillain. Just rolls off the tongue, don't you agree? Penvillain. Oh, how quaint. Oh. The Penvillains have inhabited the manor ever since it was built. It was abandoned in 1650 after its owner was executed for witchcraft. But by 17 oh god I'm messing up. But by 1715 the Penvillains had moved back into their manor and re-established themselves as a respectable wealthy family, a reputation which remains to this day. <laughs> Kia. All right. Well, there now the phone notifications are gone. And da, 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 da. okay, let's get out of here. <gasps> Creepy hallway. Oh, ooh, beautiful stained glass window. Actually, these walls are quite. There's a lot of details. This is a. I guess if. Oh, I'm so full of thoughts right now. I guess if this was built in the 11th century, there's definitely been a great amount of progression. Well, Ethel, do I have to learn this? Yes, I'm afraid you do. If I Progression do, well, of renovation. Uh, who says? Yes, but only in French. Oh. <laughs> that must be the little girl then, uh, Jane. Psst, sounds like she's doing some lessons or something. What's up in here? Oh, a tower. <gasps> <laughs> what the heck? Each step. Wait. <laughs> Each. St it's a musical staircase. <laughs> Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. <laughs> the Hidden Musical Staircase. Remix. Whoa. Ding. Okay, that's nice. Oh. Mm. Bang. Bang. What's this? Ah. Okay. Okay. Another puzzle? Girl, let's just solve this puzzle right now. I'm in the mood for a puzzle solving. Let's do this. And we got our notes out. You got your notes out. Looking at you. You got your freaking notes out. You need them out. <laughs> I'm playing. Um, all right. So let's let's get this all written out. So bling. That's the first one. Bling. And I think it's whoop. Whoop, 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 whoop. That sounds like a whoop. Not a whoop. <laughs> Whoa. Blooding. Uh, whoop. Whoa. I can't do that one. <laughs> That's what I think of when I think of. <gasps> Bang. Bang. All right. I guess I could have put bang times too. I guess I could have done anything. <laughs> oh god. Okay. So oh, so A is whoop. So A. And then B is bling. B. And C is bleeding. C. And D is wa. I'm supposed to be seeing Mrs. Drake right now, and I'm sidetracked with a puzzle. I just smell the puzzles, you know. I just suss them right out. Before I even get down the hallway, 
I smell a puzzle. Let's go up this creepy little staircase. Oh, it's musical. Oh, there's some levers at the top of the staircase that make the same sounds as what I was hearing when I was going up the stairs. One plus one equals two. <laughs> you see? <laughs> That's how my brain works. Oh, right. D. And it works like that, too. It doesn't work like that sometimes, too. Uh, sidetrack. It use bang. Oh, we don't have bang. I thought we didn't- I thought we had bang. Okay. So two E's. Oh wait, we need whoop. No, we have whoop. Wait, whoa, that's a new one! Stium. Stium. Oh, that's the last one. Oh, tick tock! Tick tock! Tick tock! Tick tock! <laughs> cool. Okay. So, can, do I have to go back now and go back? Okay. Alright, bling, which is B. Whoop. Oh, I never got wa. Where's wa? It's D. It's D. No, I didn't get whoop either. What? How is that possible? Wa is D. Oh no, whoop is A. Oh, I see. Oh, I already did get them. I just need to get the copies. Okay, so let's start that over again. And here goes nothing. Bling. Whoa. <laughs> bang! Bang! Oh, look at that! Woo! We got a key! I got a key! Woo! It's a fancy looking little key, too! Look at that! Okay, we got a key, folks! That's our first item! Ooh, look at it! It's cute! Or, I mean, it's cute. It's, <laughs> it is cute, but it's, I like how it's like an old, it's very old. I mean, this place is 1100. Or, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 900, almost a thousand year old castle. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's out of the way. We got one puzzle. Is that in the checkbook? Or in the, <laughs> Nancy's little checkbook. She's dropping off dollar bills. Uh, pull those levers at the top of those stairs. Check. Noisy stairs. Ha ha. I love oh, honey. Forget it. Stay in Italy as long as you want. Then some kind of husband you're proving to be. <gasps> oh. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. Ooh, ooh, she mad. This must be Linda. This must be Linda Penvalin, the one that's uh staying here while her husband is touring the world as a, as a British diplomat. So she's obviously very upset that now he's in Italy and he's sounds like he's going to be there for an extended stay. And wifey is not happy. She ain't having it. Okay. She must be going through a lot of stuff. We gotta figure out what she's... Should we go see her first? I mean, it's on the way. I gotta go downstairs anyway. <gasps> Ew. Did you see this? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I don't know, Nancy. I wasn't thinking, hmm. I was thinking, what the f <laughs> I need something else for this. Oh, so we got to play around with this little fella. I need something else for this. Okay, duly noted. We'll be back. Let's go see Linda. Let's just, let's, it is on the list. Oh. oh. Okay. Uh, A. Don't like the ominous music as I enter this room. B. There's a lot of covered items in here, which really makes me wonder um, if anyone's even here. Are we hearing things? Oh, maybe not. No, they got their photos up here. She is not happy. Look at that face. Like, look at that face. She is... Hmm. Trouble in paradise. They, they don't seem like a happy couple. He seems pretty darn happy. Pretty oblivious to how his wife's feeling, but... And she's very gorgeous. That's a gorgeous portrait. Same with that one. She's got good looks. Um, yeah, but I don't understand. They, they're not good. <gasps> is she in there? That's creepy if she is. Oh, look at that cell phone. Ah, I want that cell phone. It kind of looks like my cell phone. This is the phone I'm upgrading to. <laughs> so right now I've got my iPhone, right? And it's it's pretty damaged. 
that was recent. I had in very good shape up until a couple of weeks ago. And then I accidentally closed this in a car door and now it's bent a little bit. But I'm trying to make the switch from iPhone back to flip phone. So I have my flip phone ready. And look at that. I'm twinning with Linda Penvalin. Hi girl, what's up Linda? <laughs> Can I get your number? Can I get your number? <laughs> and I love doing that too. You just throw it. I could throw it over my shoulder and it wouldn't break. Yep or doodle do. Okay. So let's talk to Linda here. I'm very, I've been very sidetracked with that cell phone of hers. It's very nice. Oh, oh, that scared me. Her, her silhouette. I don't know if we should bother her. Should we bother her? Maybe we should bother her. Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. Well, welcome to Blackmore Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. Oh, that's that's quite all right. No, no need to apologize. Sorry to bother someone. In your condition. So how are you feeling? And I'm sorry to have to bother you in your condition. But I, we don't really know what condition she's in. She might take that offensively. So how are My you condition? feeling? How am I feeling? Well, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like something really strange is happening. Like what? Could you be more specific? Could I be more specific? Ah, the ace detective is grilling me for details. <laughs> I'm tired all the time, my mouth is dry, my vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. That's everything you need to know. Now if- Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay. That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me, there's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. Okay, not encouraging. <laughs> Very discouraging and a little scary. And what's she talking about? Don't open these doors and keep these doors locked and throw the key away. And I just found a key, so I know I'm going to be opening the door at one point. But is she trying to say that? If you open certain doors in this place or enter certain rooms, you'll be cursed, maybe? And she, she's got this curse or whatever the heck. The curse of Blackmore Manor. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I can't go home because I'm here to help. Um, okay, see, we're not going to talk about ourselves. That, that's a weird response. I feel like Nancy would never say that. She never talk about herself in this situation. So let's just... Show our support. Please, Linda, just tell me what's wrong. Linda? Okay, I'll let you rest. But I'll be back. Hmm. I'm here for you if you need me. That's right. Oh, good. Good choice of words, Nancy. Now let's back away slowly. Give her space. Okay, I gotta admit, though. Sorry. Sidetrack. Side note. Look how clean this place is. There is not a speck of dust on that coffee table. It is shining. And same with the headboard on this bed. Oh, it's so clean in here. I mean, obviously, there's still some cleaning to do. But, uh, yeah. Let's get the heck out of here. We gotta go talk to Mr. Drake. Or Mrs. Drake. <laughs> Mr. Drake. There goes the oh! cell phone. Hello? Hi, Nancy. It's Mrs. Petrov. How is everything? Have you seen Linda yet? Uh, let me come back into my body. Okay, sorry. What was that? <laughs> it's Mrs. Petrov. How's everything? Have you seen her yet? Uh, literally speaking? No. Have not looked her in the eye. That's a fact. We haven't looked her in the eye. We saw a very ominous silhouette, but we haven't seen her face. Yes, and I'm afraid she seemed really depressed. Okay, let's just... See. Literally speaking, no. But I did talk to her. Not that she told me anything. I'm just about at my wit's end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe she's just unhappy. Yeah, that seems 
very plausible because her husband's always away and it seems like she doesn't have a very good rapport or a relationship with her stepdaughter Jean. She was a little bit uh, harsh there. <laughs> Leave me alone! Well, she didn't say it like that. <laughs> uh, why is she hiding behind the curtain? Why is she yeah. hiding behind that curtain? I have no idea. When I was out there last week, I got fed up and pulled the curtain back. She threw a fit, but otherwise she looked absolutely normal. A little pale, perhaps, but who wouldn't be pale cooped up like that? Something has changed her. Something in that house. Oh. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. <sighs> no pressure. No pressure. Where is Hugh? <laughs> he was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. He'd much rather be there with Linda. Although... Although what? Although what? <laughs> it's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason, which doesn't make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even-tempered. Mm. She never gets angry. At least she didn't used to. Okay, so why is she getting angry? I'm losing it. This is very Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care uh, of Blackmore Manor ever okay. since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. Oh, okay. Oh, so <clears throat> Hugh's dad inherited this place. But since he passed away... His aunt's taking care of the players. And then I guess he will one day, right? Are you think? Wait a minute. Like, I know a lot about the British royal family, you know, heirage and who comes next and all this, the succession. Uh, wouldn't Hugh, when his father died, wouldn't Hugh have taken over the manor legally and all that? Hmm. Interesting point to be made, though, because if Mrs. Drake found a way to squirrel her way past or ahead of Hugh to get the place from her brother. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe. <laughs> I noticed. The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, trowel in hand, murmuring <laughs> to herself, you'd think she was burying something. Or somebody. Goodbye, Mrs. Petroff. Okay. Goodbye, Nancy. <laughs> oh, one more thing. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town, and, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. Okay. Bye, Mrs. Petra. Look at this. Oh, wow. This grand hall. Oh, my word. And the floor is just shiny, shiny marble. Oh, polished and incredible, and the music to go with it. Oh, oh, hmm. Very relaxing and calm. Okay, so I feel the safest and most comfortable in the Grand Hall. Who is this fine young lady? Oh, hey, girl. What's your name? Oh, look at. Oh. <laughs> Her name's Betty or Penny. Her name is Betty. This is an interesting looking game. How do you play this? Uh, oh. Oh, it doesn't oh it doesn't work. She don't work. Oh. Oh look at that. We might need something to get her going. <laughs> oh, oh look at this. So all these photos on the wall are all the Penvalin descendants. Wow. I really wish I was a part. Like, I wish my family had it set up like this. Every descendant or, or predecessor lined up in a hallway with nice golden frames, beautiful portrait, and a coat of arms, too. That'd be nice to top it off. A whole hall of woodbacks. That'd be cool. This one looks like the one in our room, doesn't it? Huh, so was it her room? Is that her room? Whoever she is. He's pretty cute. Who's this, who's this guy? You might not be able to see his face because my uh, 
face. My face is right here. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Oh, oh, look, more descendants. This is getting a little more, this is probably the most recent side because that looks like the 20s, right? 1920s or 30s. That looks like the early, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, 1910 or so. That looks more 1800s. Okay. These are all of their coat of arms. All right. Ah, yes. Okay, because that must be, that must be Hugh. Hugh Pendleton. He doesn't have a coat of arms. Interesting. And his dad. Pergamentum exit. His dad. So, okay, yeah, like 1940s, right? 50s. And then he looks a lot like his dad. Wow. So on the other side <laughs> must be real old. Whoa. Minima maxima sunts. Yes, that, that looks like 1200s, 1300s, maybe 1400s. I mean, if that's the first portrait, 1100, then that looks a little too modern. I don't think so. I think maybe that's the first portrait they had in a family. 1200, 1300, or 1400s. That's very 15th century looking. No, it's a little more 14th century looking. Well, I'm just going to kick myself figuring it out because <laughs> I love history. So I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't think it's really important, is it? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Look at look at these freaking photos or portraits. I love them. <gasps> hey, there's that gargoyle that we saw earlier. This guy kind of looks like the gargoyle, <laughs> to be honest. No offense, buddy. <laughs> He doesn't have a coat of arms, though, either. That's that's really peculiar and mysterious. Oh, see? Okay, it is a chronological. Because now it's like 1700s. Early 1800s. 1790s. 1810s. Right here. Yeah. Okay. They did a very astounding, astounding job with that. Oh, what does that say? Paul Cherit. <laughs> Pulchritudo, pul Pulchritudo in Umania. Om Omnia. Pulchritudo in Omnia. Latin. I feel like I'm in Harry Potter right now. Oh, look at there's a little, there's a crevice, a crack outlining this one. Why? What are you so, what's so important about you? What's your, what's your secret? <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I think we've seen all of the, uh, what do you call it? There's another gargoyle. Can't do nothing with him. Huh. Very interesting. I can't leave Blackmore yet. Oh, I don't think she's going to say that. Okay. And these columns are very interesting. Looks like a piece is missing. Huh. And each column's... Looks like a piece is missing. Oh, each column's missing a piece, and it looks like we're going to have to... Uh, huh. We're going to have to find all these pieces. I have a key. <laughs> Will that do anything to these columns? What's in here? Oh. oh, even older. Okay. So they keep the older, older portraits in the back hall. That don't make no sense, does it? Huh, huh. There's another painting. Wonder what happened in there. Please stay out of the kitchen until the fire damage is repaired. <sighs> Oof, that doesn't sound good. In an old house like this? Holy smokes, that's even older. That's, there's like the 1100, 12th century uh, painting. It's still pretty detailed for the time, though, I gotta say. Hmm. All right, they had a lot of money if they were hiring... Uh, Good photographer or painter, painters like that. Bridget Penvalin, in recognition of Bridget Penvalin, sponsor of the Essex Cricket Club, 1751. <gasps> wow, 250 year old croquet or cricket bats here. Cricket bat here. Anyone play Love for Dead? Rochelle. Cricket bat here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, well, it's a loop de loop. So let's loop to loop our way right out of here. And I'm guessing this is interesting too, this layout on the floor. Uh, I'm guessing this is 
the conservatory because it's got the big metal door. Yes! Wow! Look at the size of this! Oh, I would just eat this up. I would love this. This was my house. I'd have a heyday in here. Planting and... It's big too, isn't it? Oh, and we're going down. We're going downtown. Oh, those steps are very satisfying. It could use some TLC. Gotta admit. The plants are looking good, but it just looks a little dunk, uh, a little dark, you know? No, not dark. There's a lot of lights, but just musty, you know? All musty stuff like that. It's nice, though. Mm, looks like John Pendleton may have developed some of the plants that are in here himself. Huh. Wow. Wow, so they're still going after, well, I guess it's 2004, so almost 100 years <laughs> in this time. The Amateur Plant Hybridizers <clears throat> Association of Great Britain, that's a mouthful, presents the 1912 award for astounding achievement to John Pendleton. Well, well, good for you, Mr. Pendleton. Seems like a, what's this? Oh, nice little mosaic for this fountain here doesn't work oh that sucks you don't really need it but that sucks doesn't work oh what's up this must be some kind of well but where's the water yeah what's going on down there hello hello <laughs> echo echo <laughs> all right where's mrs drake a carnivorous plant. Cool. Oh. That's creepy. That's probably not a good idea. Yeah, let's not touch that. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> this is a giant ass meat eater thing plant. It's like a Venus flat trap. Hey, girl. Okay, we found her. Wait, what's over here? Messing with her plants is probably not a good idea. No, no, not a good idea at all. What's this? Benzaline. One tablet every six hours is as needed for allergy symptoms. Oh, oh, Letitia. That's her first name, Letitia Drake. I like that. That's a very nice name. Um, every six hours. Wow. So she's really allergic to plants, I guess. But she loves planting. All settled in. Good. I'm happy that you're visiting Linda, but I know how much you teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you, but please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. Leave her alone. Well, we'll say hello, but we'll leave her alone. <clears throat> Is anyone else staying here? Anyone else we should know about before they come out and scare us? Because we don't know who they are. Is anyone else staying here? We do not have any permanent house staff, if that's what you mean. Oh. The Penvalents have always been self-reliant. <laughs> we get on oh. quite well without being continuously mollycoddled by a squadron of insipid, gossiping ne'er-do-wells. Oh. Now, we do have two other house guests. Oh, Mr. Nigel Mukherjee, who is researching the Penvalent family history in the library, and Ethel Bossany, Jane's tutor. Okay. <laughs> Ethel. There's a name I remember. I remember Ethel. Mm-hmm. Hmm. She's... She's scary on her own. <laughs> she don't need a big manner to be scary. She is just a scary person. I remember her. Oh, there's a lot of questions here. Oh, okay. Do you know what it's wrong with Linda? Yeah. Do you know what's wrong what you know? with Linda? Oh, Linda simply needs some time <laughs> oh! to adjust to her new living situation. <laughs> what a, what a England sigh. is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. Damn right. You do do things properly over there. <laughs> So she doesn't seem very concerned that it's anything serious, but Linda's mom thinks otherwise. Mrs. Petrov thinks otherwise. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. I think maybe personally, just off the hop, I have a feeling that Mrs. Drake probably um, 
doesn't seem so serious about it or focused on the, seri the severity of it because she seems very in tune and in love with her gardening. You know, if she's got medication set up just so she can practice her passion, then I feel like her focus is here. So I don't know. I don't think she's being shady or being mean or rude. She just thinks it's something silly and something that could potentially distract her from her gardening that she does, does not want nothing about. Hmm. Her mother told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? I don't know, and the doctors don't know. No one seems to know anything. All I've been told is that Linda is unwell and that in her stead, I must look after matters. Now, please, I really do not have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not break anything and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules <laughs> Jane seems incapable of following. And before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation remodeled. is rather unorthodox. <laughs> the is I've being made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. Oh. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. Ooh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> I'm concerned about that thing I saw outside. It was purely your imagination, unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry about with Linda. And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate. I do Why? not want you tracking mud all over this house. Oh. <laughs> Shoulda saw that coming. <laughs> Shoulda saw that coming with this with this one right here. This conservatory is very beautiful. Yeah, where is there this any water in your well? Is very beautiful. <laughs> Am I here to but do why more isn't there any than investigate? Water in the well? Nancy I'm not Drew, quite sure. We water. never really used it, but it was always oh. full of water. That is until my brother died, and then it just dried up. Most of these plants were brought over by my <laughs> grandfather. He was oh, wow. quite the adventurer. I remember when he brought back Lulu from the Amazon. At first, Mother wouldn't allow us to play with it because it had picked up too many unsuitable words from sailors. But it gradually learned proper manners. Aww. Who is Lulu? Lulu is a very old parrot. She must be over 80 years old. Please be very careful with her, especially if you feed her. Parrots have quite delicate constitutions, you know. Goodbye. The pleasure is all mine, child. The pleasure is all mine, child. Oh, that just pulled a huge memory tab out of my brain. I love her. Who's hungry? Who's ready for some nummy? <laughs> Did you say something, Mrs. Drake? Not to you, dear. <laughs> Okay, I spoke too soon. I really love Mrs. Drake. <laughs> she's she's quirky like me. She's weird. I like weird. Whoa, look how tall up we really are. If I go up the stairs, look into the distance here. This is a big place. I want to be here. IRL in real life. <laughs> I want to be here in real life. Okay, well... We have, let's check up our to-do list here, because we've done quite a lot. We've got, we've done quite a lot so far. Oh, Nigel Mukherjee, Mukherjee. Gotta say hello to him. Let's get to the bottom of this checklist, okay? Figure out where the conservatory is. Did I'm finished that. with that. Talk to Linda. Did That's done. Did that. How did this get closer to my chin? Like dead. The music is becoming ominous. Ominous. Figured how to. Oh yeah, we did. Not yet, but we will. I know more. Yeah, we'll find out more. Okay, so we're good. So the story, uh, Mrs. Drake was talking about her grandfather. This, because there's Lulu. We haven't met Lulu yet, but there's the parrot that she talked about. Uh, her grandfather bringing back from the Amazon. Huh. So that must have been her father. That's Mrs. Drake's father. Oh, and that's her brother. Oh, uh, okay. I was going to say there's another generation though. Okay. So, wow. Wow. So that's Mrs. Drake's great, great grandfather, which would make this her great, great, great grandfather. And then her four times great grandfather. And then her fifth time. Five times great-grandmother. Oh, 
I love history like that. I love family history. I love seeing it all tangibly like that. Oh, it's so cool. To me, that's probably one of the most like humbling and uh, just captivating things for me. A thing for me is like family lineage and you know history and and seeing it like as organized as this, which is a rarity in real life. Just. It, it like it's fulfilling my heart strings. <laughs> I just love history. Love, love, love. Especially family history. Okay. So let's go in here now because Whoa. Ooh, someone is typing away. This is a very creepy library. Very, very creepy. Oh, hello! Oh, what's this? <gasps> oh, creepy statue. He's like this. Wait, no, he's like no, I'm going cross-eyed. He's like... <laughs> I think I was still cross-eyed there. Fascinating piece, isn't it? Oh, James Penvelin sculpted it in 1591, although it appears that wand was added at a later date. He was quite a flamboyant figure and never married. But one day, a child appeared quite mysteriously in the castle, and he took her in as his own. That was Eleanor. Oh. And many of the town folk believed her to be a changeling or fairy baby. Oh. Huh. Well, thanks for the info, Mr. Mukherjee. 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 <laughs> Not sure how to say his name. His last name. Uh, okay. Well, let's say hello. Ah, yes. Are you here from the agency? It's about time. No. No, I'm Nancy I'm Drew, no a friend of Linda's. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Nigel Mukherjee. I'm researching the Penvelin family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Penvelins until now. Oh, and I'm guessing you're the one to do it, right? <sighs> oh, that's not an option. <laughs> uh, why do you think that is? Sounds intriguing. It does, like I just finished saying. I'd like to know more. Sounds intriguing. Like, I would it like to know more. It might have something genuinely. to do with their scandalous history. Ooh, okay. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. What? Oh, this family's got all kinds of curses, history, uh, scandals, treasure. Where do we begin? Uh, let's see. Scandal. Scandalous history? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. Oh. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmore Beast. The Beast? What? Oh, he's caught me in a moment here, because I want to know which family member was a witch and got burned. But I want to know more about this beast, too. Who was the family member? Yeah. Eleanor Penvelin, tried and convicted of witchcraft uh, in 1650, quite the oh. height of the witch trials here in Essex. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. Huh. Oliver Cromwell? Yeah, I actually want to ask Oliver Cromwell. Wait, before I ask though, Eleanor Penvelin, that's the one he mentioned when we looked at the statue. Uh, mid 1500s, uh, James Penvelin, he said, built that. Like 1551, he built that, uh, no, what? No, somewhere in the 1500s, he built that statue. But he mentioned how he was the one who took in uh, a little girl named Eleanor, the changeling, and raised her as his own. So it sounds like that girl he brought in ended up being a witch. <gasps> Ooh, that is scandalous. Ooh, I like this family history, you know, it's cool. But yeah, Oliver Cromwell, was he the one? Cromwell? Oliver Cromwell? Oh, Ironside? Okay, wow. <laughs> I suppose they don't teach history any longer in the US. <laughs> Lady Penvelin was a rather vocal critic of Cromwell's policies and helped many of his enemies flee the country. Oh, wow. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown. Uh, Although okay. many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor. Tolling their charmed chimes. Ooh. That's really creepy. I just imagining that. I really hope that we don't run into any phantom hands while we're walking around the manor. 
because that'd be very creepy. And those hands better not touch anything they're not supposed to. <laughs> Tell me about the Pendleton family <laughs> treasure. For centuries, the Pendletons have been very secretive. Some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure, or of some dark secret. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Tea stain my shirt. I hope not. Okay. Yes. What about this beast? That sounds really cre creepy, doesn't it? Because if there was a if there was a Blackmore beast. Back in Eleanor Penvalen's time in the 1600s, 17th century, mid 17th century, then why are we still seeing creepy beast like eyes outside of the castle in 2004? That's really creepy. Tell me more. Can you tell me about the Blackmore tell beast? Us more. It's a story that's been told for generations out here. Uh, During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and giant fangs prowling the moors. They asked the mistress of Blackmoor Manor, Eleanor Penvalin, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting the creature. It was rumored that the uh, beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvalin secret. Wow. Oh, this has layers. Oh, I love this. I'm getting the shakes. I'm so excited. Okay, so wow. So when Eleanor, Eleanor's husband, she, oh, but wait a minute. Doesn't it in today, like modern day 2004 here, uh, doesn't it seem like history is repeating itself? Instead of Eleanor, Hugh Penvalin, is now the owner of this castle and his wife is the one who is sick or quote unquote cursed is she the new beast of blackmore <gasps> na, 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 na. <laughs> yeah that's peculiar that's that's, that's very peculiar cuz red eyes but that couldn't have been what so was that linda in the front of the house when we first got here with the eyes Nancy. <laughs> it could have been. Maybe it was her, because think about it. Why would the beast know our name? And it was a female voice. Just kind of, you know, scruffly and muffly. Very uh, beast-like. <laughs> Alright. There, let's bring it up When again. I was walking up to the house, I saw something with red eyes that called out to me. Really? How extraordinary. Are you sure it wasn't just jet lag? Positive, and I heard it make this kind of growling sound. Perhaps it was the cursed husband of Eleanor Penvalin prowling about the moors in search of lost yanks. <laughs> ha ha. Very ha. funny. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> um, or maybe it wasn't Eleanor's husband, but Hugh's wife. <laughs> it's Linda out there, crazy Linda in the bushes. Freaking everyone out. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Who are all those paintings of in the Great Hall? I mean, those are the know, Pendolins but... who owned Blackmoor Manor at one time or another. Figured. All right. I'll bye. let you get back to your work. Farewell. Bye, Nigel. Look at him type away. He's really busy. He's getting it done. I wouldn't mind having a laptop. It'd be kind of nice to just open up and be somewhere and, you know, get work done. I'm not one of those people though. I just. Like to... Bud the door off. Spasiba. Huh? Sprekenda, sprekenda Deutsch? <laughs> what language was that? Spasiba. Must mean thank you. Some language. I don't know what Nancy said. I was waiting for a gazoon tight, I bless you. It must be pretty dang dusty in here, though. And, uh, I can understand why in a 900 year old castle, there must be some dust particles flying around up in here. Lava's. I doubt you'll find much of interest in there. They're mainly law books. Charles Penvalin was a prominent judge in the 16th century. Sad to say, he lost his son at a young age, left his estate to his grandson, Thomas. Thomas. Okay, uh, we're learning more and more <laughs> about each Penvalin, right? Kind of like, uh, coincidentally almost, or it's like incidentally we're learning about the family bit by bit, you know what I mean? So there's an Eleanor, there's a Charles, there's a James, there's a Thomas, but 
I think I'm gonna have to eventually write out a family tree in our notes here because this is a lot of pendulums to to keep track of. 900 years worth of pendulums. That's that's easily like 12, 13 generations, right? 15 maybe generations if someone died young or whatever. So in my mind, as I'm hearing more names and grandson, it's slowly coming together, but because James Penvalin, he built the statue and he took in Eleanor and Eleanor was executed in the 1650s. But there's a Charles Penvalin somewhere after James or before James. And then after Eleanor comes Thomas the grandson, I guess. Oh no! <laughs> Oh no, I don't know nothing. Oh well, we'll have to take some more notes. Old manuscripts, ooh, 14th and 15th century? Those manuscripts are very oh. old and brittle. They date back to the 14th century. Yeah. Odo Penvalin collected most of them. His father, Randolph, and son, Milo, were rather more interested in military See? victories than in book collecting. Okay, so there was an Odo Penvalin. <laughs> 15th century, I think he said. And he had a father named Randolph, and a son named Milo, who was probably born in the late 15th century. Okay, so it's like Randolph, Odo, Milo, there might be a few more in between, and then we go to James, Charles, Eleanor, somewhere in there, and then Thomas. But there's someone in between Thomas and Eleanor because that's the grandson, so there's a father. <sighs> okay, slowly getting a mental, I'm seeing a, a conscious mental image of this family tree so far. But again, I gotta see it in front of me. I, I, keeping it up here gives me a headache. It, it's a yeah, pet peeve of mine. As you can see, everything's written down. <laughs> Okay, can we look at any books without Nigel jumping in and telling us what's what? He can't even see us, and he just he just knows. Maybe he's the beast. Hm, never thought of that. Those are mainly Penelope Penvalin's oh, collections of French okay. novels. She was a patron to a raft of artists, and her salon was quite popular. Oh. She was quite the libertine, even kept her maiden name after her marriage. So 1700s. So now further way down, there's a. Hachu! Gazuntai. Danka. Danka. Okay, there we go. I was waiting for the German. Gazuntai. <laughs> Danka. This man's sneezing all kinds of sneezes. Maybe we should get him some, uh, some of that spray for your nose. Nasal spray. Huh. Oh, can we hop on the computer? I couldn't quite oh. track the provenance of that piece, Creepy. but Philippe must have brought it back from the New World. Philippe. He became quite wealthy as a merchant in the Americas, and restored Blackmore's original splendor after it had been abandoned for years. His daughter Penelope continued the renovation, commissioning the construction of this library by Roger Vizier, who built a similar one for the French general Jean Leboeuf. Uh. <laughs> A this way. Merci. <laughs> Gee, a this way. Oh, I didn't know that was a blessing in French. I should remember that. Uh, so Penelope, this is her collection, collection stuff. So 17th century, so her father... Okay, we're getting closer to... Kind of closer to putting it all together. Jeez. I, I need to figure it out, though. I, I don't even want to solve the mystery anymore. I just want to solve the family lineage and see it all in front of me with names and some small facts. I wonder if there's anything else. Hello, Nancy. Oh, okay. I'll let you get back to your work. Farewell. I wondered if there's something else I could say to him that would, uh, what do you call it? Something else I could say to him that would, uh, trigger some family talk. Do you mind if I use this computer? No, not at all. But it's very old. Feel free to use mine if I'm not here. Who's Alan? Alan Penvalin was a noted researcher in computers and languages. <laughs> Jane let me into his computer, but there was nothing much of interest on it. What's the password? I'm not sure. Okay, interesting. And yeah, old computer, look at that. It's white. You know white computers. Ancient. Okay, nothing else to see in here, I guess. These lights are really interesting, eh? They're 
they're bright and very bloomy, but with the green, it's like, it's interesting. I kind of would like something like this. I just wish I could live here. I want to live here. <laughs> I say this whenever Nancy Drew, I swear. Let's show on a mansion. I want to live here. <laughs> the Treasure of the Royal Tower. I want to live here. <laughs> Ghost Dogs of Moon Lake. I want to live here. I want to live on, on Moon Lake. <laughs> but it, it, it's just, it's so immersive. There's, it's so rich with, you know, well, I guess we're not going to Okay, fine. But you know what I mean? There's just so much depth in these games. And, okay, so... So I'm wondering then, so there's Hugh, this must be Alan, brother Alan, brother to Mrs. Drake, but his father Alan, and then, uh, so I wonder then, going backwards, if this is Penelope, oh, look it, oh, oh, I just made a connection, y'all. So this is the same plaque in our room, right? And the same uh, Latin uh, caption here. Look what's behind her head, a telescope. So it must be indeed a telescope. Now we can confirm it's a telescope stand, but we don't got no telescope to use. We don't got no telescope. The frig was that? <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, we have a met Lulu, the parrot. <gasps> if I wasn't prepared for that, then that's not funny. That ain't funny, Polly. You want me to call you Polly? I'll call you. <laughs> oh. oh, it's just a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> Polly want a cracker? Polly want a cracker? <laughs> Okay, I get the point. Lulu. Lolo, 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 Lolo. Do you have any chance no Latin? For a second, I'm like, why are you asking a parrot if he knows Latin or she know or she he she knows Latin? But then I'm thinking in my head, wait a minute, this is an 80 year old bird from the Amazonians. This bird knows a thing or two. <laughs> Do you by any chance know Latin? Queste rogavit, bene bidivici, semper ubi sabubi, moritoris tetris. I'll take that as a yes. Would you mind translating something for me? Fire away! <laughs> oh, he's good. Oh, look at all these different Latin phrases. Uh, Minima Maxima Sunt. Some of these are from the plaques downstairs or the coat of arms. Some of these are from. Oh, oh, we're out of time. No, it's not these. Uh, uh, <laughs> some of them are from the charts, like Bruma, that was in the charts, or uh, Solstitium. Pergmentum Exit. That was on one of the. This is the only plaque one I'm remembering. No, sorry, Newman Lumen. I remember that one. Newman Lumen. <laughs> Why does that sound so funny? Okay, let's do this one. Per Pergamentum exit. Garbage out. Gar Gar <laughs> <laughs> she said that so state of state of the fact. She's like, garbage out. <laughs> okay. Bye, bird. Ale, bye, bye. Ale, bye, bye. <laughs> I want to pair it now for 80 years. I want to be a 90 year old person. And just sit there with my parrot that's like 10 years younger than me and just... Aww, we're so glad you brought the bird. Brought Lulu back. Okay, so which one had Pergmentum Exus? There's Newman Lumen. Obviously something to do with light. Lumen. Luminosity. Light. Oh, Newman? Maybe Numerous. Numerous light. I mean, there's a picture of a sun. Okay, it's all coming together. Little things here. I wonder if I could start doing that with other things. Other labels here. Per auris ad animinum. Couldn't tell you. But Newman Lumen, that sounds like... Oh! This, right, this one. Per mentum exit. Garbage out. Why was his saying garbage out? Huh. Maybe it is a secret message. If I know what the password is for that... Oh, right. 
Find out what's making all those weird noises in the upstairs hallway. Sounds like they're coming from under that blanket. Oh, ha. That's Lolo. done. That was supposed to be such a big deal, but I saw the blanket. I'm like, okay. Talk to Jane. We'll do that in the next episode. We did talk to Nigel. That's done. Find out more about the stars. Uh, I haven't done that yet. No, no, we haven't. Okay. Well, in that case, then, let's just go back to the bedroom. I keep hearing more banging. Oops. Is this her doorbell? Oh. Oh! Oh! Wait a minute. The key fits, but it won't turn. I need to put some kind of grease in there first. Oh. Okay, again, no expected. 900-year-old castle. Not everything's going to be perfect around here. Anything. I can hear Lulu from here. Oh, my word. Is she going to keep me up at night? Oh, look at this. Oh, I'd love to sit here and read a book. Actually, you know what? This is not the kind of reading nook kind of thing. No, because the windows aren't very... They don't let in a lot of light. You can't really see out of them. Because if you're sitting right here, you can't really... I like a big window base seat so you can see outside and read and... Oh, what's this? Wonder what goes there. Oh. Something fits in here, but what? I don't know, girl. I'm as stumped as you. All right. Yeah, and there's that... There's the plaque again. Okay. Okay, well, you know what? This will be our new HQ. We'll end and start all episodes in this room. All right? This is our new HQ. You know how every mystery we grab an HQ room. We've got to have a place where we start and end. However, I'm thinking at the end of each episode... We're gonna, we're gonna order some food. <laughs> Let's see what they got on the menu. Balls head pub, this is Tommy. Hey, Tommy. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. <laughs> I'm supposed to call you if I want some food. Right, right, Nancy Drew, out at the old black mall Out at the old black mall <laughs> man, are you? Yeah. Hank Marvin up there. Pity about your kitchen, but we'll fix you up for some Bex and Posh. Just tell me what you'd like. Oh, he's speaking uh, in... Okay, uh, yeah. what do you have? We've got some loop-de-loop, -loop, bangers and mash, a real fine pinky and perky, and a delicious <laughs> dog's eye, me forking knife, just rubber ducked. Rubber ducked. Hello? Um, <laughs> could you repeat that? <laughs> sure, we've got some loop-de-loop, -loop, bangers, bangers and mash, and mash pinky, pinky and perky and a dog's, dog's eye, eye, and they're all Robin Hood. Hood. See, okay, I think I know what he's doing here. There's an old British, I don't know what it's called in England, but there's a, there's, there's to be an old way of speaking, like a funny way of speaking, a, a secret kind of British language where they would speak in, uh, like these all mean something else. So bangers and mash rhymes with what? Hash? No. <laughs> Nancy's ordering some hash for dinner. <laughs> Oh, token detective. <laughs> uh, bangers and mash. Something in that. Loop to loop. Soup? Loop, soup? Maybe? Loop to loop, soup. Uh, pinky and perky. I couldn't tell you. Dog's eye. Dog's eye. Large fry? <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Let's just let's just pick something. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna drive myself nuts trying to remember all this crap. It would be cool to learn that that secret language, though. You know. I hope that gives us an opportunity to kind of learn some of it. I should write that down. I want to learn it. Oh, we're out of time. Okay. Okay. Let's let's do this. Uh, loop to loop. We got options. Look at a few four episodes at least of food. We'll have to double up. Uh, Pinky and Perky. Let's do pinky and perky. I'm feeling pinky and perky today. I'd like some <laughs> pinky and perky, please. Good choice. Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. Uncle Fred, Johnny Rudder. Oh, oh, uh, I get it now. Okay, so you disregard the first word of each and then look for the, the rhyme in the second word. Because Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. Okay, let's take away the thing. Fred and Rudder. What does that sound like? Think of food. Bread and butter. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm, I'm getting closer now. I get it. No, I'll be eating alone. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, then. We'll come round and leave it at your Rory. Oh, and we've got no hot potato about, so it might take a bit. But we'll have it up to you in no time. Fish and taters. Fish and taters. Okay. When's the food gonna get here? Maybe I just have to leave the room and and come go back in. 
Let's see if that's that's how we do it. Is my food here? No! Where the heck is my food? Huh. Maybe if I go to another place in the building. Let's let's go to the conservatory. And then we turn around. I still can't get over how huge this is. Gorgeous though. This is goals. I'd love to live in England in this manner. I'd feel so proud and just so... I don't know what the word, I want to say dignified, but that just sounds, uh, what do you call it, privileged. But I just feel so proud and so honored to be a part of, like to look at all this and know these are all my relatives from the past. All the people that came before me, you know, and, and they all of their stories and all of their habits and hobbies and, and accomplishments and failures and, you know, all scattered about in one giant, beautiful, colossal room. To stand in the middle like Nancy is right now, if, I, if that were me and this were my family and this was my family's generational home, I would never complain in my life. I swear, I swear. Family is literally everything. And when I say family is everything, for me, it really is. Like, it's not the here and now, spend time with your loved ones. It's the then and behind stuff, too, you know? It's it's where did the family come from? How, who, how did this family build and cultivate into where it is now? And in these people, you know, and the stories. And, oh, my heart melts. I'm a sucker for that. Sucker for that. I mean, I'm a sucker for history. But then that extra layer, the depth of family history, oof, yeah. So I can really appreciate, I really appreciate, you know, all the aesthetic and, and thought and depth of story in this, in this uh, mystery. Because all of this is just, it's such a high for me. All of this, the plaques, the pictures, the names, the story, the history. Oh, it's like I'm like getting high right now. <laughs> so stoned off family history, man. <laughs> Uh, okay. Oh, oh, our food must be ready. Side track over here. That must be the food oh, I ordered. Yeah, let's see. Looks like Pinky and Perky is turkey. turkey. I knew that. Oh, okay. This smells delicious. Oh, I bet. Mmm. Fresh potato, the gravy in the middle. Oh, no, that's all gravy. Oh, they gave us a lot of gravy. Oh, for the turkey. The peas. Bread and butter, Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder. <laughs> okay. And Uncle Fred and Johnny Rudder are just plain old bread and butter. Love. I can use my Johnny Rudder to grease up that lock outside Jane's room. Oh! Girl, you're so smart. Yeah! I love how she said I could use my Johnny Rudder. <laughs> All right, dig in, girl. You've done a lot today. Wait, why am I taking a piece of turkey with me? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is Nancy putting a piece of turkey in her bag? I mean, I get the butter. I get the butter to grease up this key so it gets in a lot. But why do I want a slice of turkey? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll, we'll, we'll learn the significance, right? Patience will we'll bring understanding to all things. But this is just peculiar i mean eat your food don't don't play with it is she gonna eat this oh good mm. good girl <laughs> <sighs> that was really good finish your peas get all your vegetables in you and get that little bit of potato too i would never leave a plate like that come on now but that's just so weird i'm still kicking over the turt a slice of one slice of turkey. I'm just gonna shove that in my purse and away we go. And we got two pieces of butter in there too. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I can accept that for now. We'll figure it out eventually. Alright, well let's end it here with the fireplace. Front and center. Beautiful. Alright folks, I love y'all so much. Thank you so much, all of you guys, for watching. This first premiere episode of Nancy Drew, Curse of Blackmore Manor. I am very, very grateful and appreciative, and I am so sorry. But is that a book? That was John Pendleton. Another Pendleton. Oh, 1937. This is the grandfather. Huh. Oh, oh, hold up, frog. 
uh, the lady, this is, this is in relation to that, that, uh, pond in the conservatory. Sorry, the fountain that's dried out. These are the same murals or paint pictures that are depicted in murals in that fountain. So I think we found an answer there to how we maybe get the water back or, or just a secret compartment. I don't know. But did y'all see that? That's funny. I didn't even, I stopped right here and I just saw right up there. Look at that. Just a sliver. Would have never seen that. <laughs> All right. Okay. Still stay still. All right. So yes, where was I? Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> I appreciate, adore, and I'm so ever so grateful for all of you guys so very much. You guys are amazing. The Clue Crew out here again with me, uh, accomplishing another another mystery. Um, and you know, I know I've been gone for for such a long time. Feels like a long time. You know, being on and off sick this year has just been such a battle, and it sucks. But you know, it's life, and you just gotta accept it. You gotta move on and raise your chin and keep and keep pushing on and keep moving forward. So. You know what? I'm not sick now. Knock on wood. And I'm feeling great. I'm back in my element. I'm doing what I got to do. I've got, you know, I've got a, um, a reestablished uh, schedule and itinerary and uh, a morning routine, you know, to keep me healthy here and in here and in everywhere. <laughs> All different set mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, you know. Uh, so I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right things. So I just hope that by doing all these right things that we don't have to go through another sick spell where I'm gone for a month out of nowhere. <laughs> but that's what I think I was, I was going to say lead into is that no matter how sick I get moving forward, I will be sitting here doing these mysteries with y'all. And if I have to be honest with you and guys and just say, you know, I feel like crap today. Don't mind me. Or I sound like this uh, today on the Nancy Drew show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It might be like that, but we're going to push through. I'm, I'm sick of, I'm sick of, uh, I'm sick of letting sickness get the better of me or, or take away opportunities uh, of great experience that we can share together. Enough of that. Enough of that. The fun times carry on, whether it's sick or not. Whether I'm broken, whether I'm, you know, it doesn't even matter what state I'm in. We're carrying on from this moment forward. No more hiatus. No more I'm sick. Sorry, guys. Done. We're, we're carrying on. Come hell or high water. Yep or doodle do. Uh, so, yeah. So this is the start of a new chapter here at Travis J Space. 12 years of Travis J Space, folks. That's right. Making more changes. We're evolving. We're progressing. Together, you and I. We've come together to share the extreme love and admiration for Nancy, all things Nancy Drew. That's why we're here. All right, folks. I love you guys so much. And I thank you guys so much for everything. And for sticking around with me all this time. Some of you have been around since 2010. And speechless. Like, I can't even think of something to say because that's just amazing. And it shows a lot of love and loyalty and, and appreciation. And I feel it all and I send it all back because you guys are just incredible. And even those of you who have just popped up in the last few months, I love you just the same and just as much. And I just, I, I, I'm very grateful and very appreciative. I'm very lucky and blessed to just be in this situation and, and doing this with you guys and sharing this experience. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three times is just not enough, but thank you. Okay, that's four times now. <laughs> but uh, yes, I will see you guys next episode. I'm Carrie. I'm starting to drag. I'm starting to. So I need to stop now because I won't stop. You know me, I trail. All right, love you guys. Thanks again. I appreciate you. I love you. We've got so much more to do. And we got to get that key in the lock now that we got the Johnny Rudder. Butter. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Love you. I will see you all in the next episode. And uh, toodles for now. Ta-ta. Ciao. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye, guys. Howdy, folks. Did you like that video? Well, then why don't you go ahead and give that thumbs up a smackaroo. Don't want to miss out on the next episode? Give the subscribe button some love and make sure to turn your notifications on. That way I can give you a bell a ring, let you know when it is served. Still need more to chew on? Take a bite of my new YouTube Instagram account at Travi J Space to keep up to date with the channel's inner workings and news of upcoming projects and episodes. Thanks for watching. See you next time.